um, to focus a little bit more on the, on the positive side of what we've seen over the last years. I think we have seen, and we have heard it a couple of times uh, today, an incredible success story around the internet. And, and we shouldn't focus all the time on the challenges going forward, though there are some, um, but we should also kind of see what, what this can lead to and what happened already. We heard before from Hamadoun Touré that we have around 3 billion people connected to the internet already, and that there are still 4.5 billion missing. That means that our, our glass is not only half empty, it's two-thirds empty. Okay, so there's a huge challenge. The colleague from Cisco said, we, when we start counting the things we might connect to the internet, these numbers get even up to 50 billion or whatever. So, you know, this is, this is a challenge before us. So we have not even really seen the change of the internet in this world. And I would, I would uh, to be short, I would give you a solution to that. We have six billion mobile phones today on Earth. Six billion. That's quite close to you know, the whole population of the world. It's not there, but it's close to everyone who can already or still carry a mobile phone. The problem is that these mobile phones can just do voice telephony and SMS. And they're just connected to, let's say, older mobile telephone systems which cannot support you know, a full access to the, to the internet, full broadband access. So the solution from my point of view would be very easy. You know, get these people a smartphone, get them a device which can use you know, the full capacity of the internet, and we get very, very close to the ideal of getting everyone connected. But let me, let me step back a little bit. We heard you know, that there are different markets around the internet, and I think that's interesting because um, you have to be aware that this is a so-called ecosystem, but this ecosystem is con con consisted of very different um, parts. One part is what I would call connectivity and access. And you might put in handsets, for example, as well. This is, a, as I said, a market very much driven by a heavy regulated sector, uh, by overview from the ITU and other organizations. You have to get licenses to get into that market. You have to spend a lot of money on a network. You know, you, you have also very fragmented national markets due to the reasons that we have national regulation ob uh, obviously coordinated on an international level. And I think. If you want to get to this ideal of getting everyone connected, and I'm fully, I, I fully think that this is the agenda, you know, if we say what's the new global agenda post Dubai, it's getting everyone connected. It's that easy. So if we want to get that, you know, we need to kind of incentivize private investments. This is what will bring these devices and the networks to these people, to the 4.5 billion currently not connected to the internet. So that will be the crucial factor, you know, get them to the internet, get them connectivity, get them the devices. And I will give you later on an example of, of what that could mean. And then we have the other side, and this is what we call, you know, over-the-top internet services, whatever, you know, this is what's happening on the internet. You know, once people get connected to the internet, they can use something on the internet. So, and this is a fantastic success story. We have Erica sitting here from Facebook. I mean, eight years ago, this company was founded, or maybe nine, I'm not sure, but, you know, this is now a, a company which has one billion users around the world. This is fantastic. We have other companies. If you look at the biggest companies in the world, you will find two, three from, you know, from a sector which has not even existed 10 years ago. And as I said, still two-thirds of the population missing. What might happen in the next 10, 15, 20 years? We don't even know. Maybe the next champion is coming from South Africa, Frank, uh, Brazil, Vietnam. I don't know. So, you know, this is, this is a fantastic um, success. And I think one of the reasons for that is, and, and Erica, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's that there is a global reach. You know, Facebook, if you would have, you know, that's a US-based, obviously, company was founded, you know, in the US, United States of America. I mean, if you get to every US American, you get to 250 billion, a million people. If you get to maybe every English-speaking person on Earth, you get, I don't know, to 500 million. You get to one billion only if you're global, okay? So the reason why this growth has been so fast and so exponential is the international, the global reach of the internet. So this is a, a factor we should not forget. But what are the challenges? And I think, um, obviously, the first one that comes to your mind is the fundamental rights issue. And this is a, an issue, you know, related to the privacy, it's related to freedom of speech, it's related to security, and so on. And honestly, I think that here we have the same challenges in the internet as in the real world. It's not different. I think it's very difficult to find a global compromise on what these fundamental rights should look like. 
This is not a problem of the ITU or of someone else. It's a problem of our current you know, world where we're living in. We have different um, cultures, different views on what freedom of speech should be on the internet. And I mean, I, I believe fully in, into the free speech, but you know, there are others who might, might disagree on that. So I think to get a solution to that issue related to fundamental rights, we will need to kind of have a look um, to the real world. We will need to have a look to the broad principles and agreements we've seen in the real world happening around freedom of speech, privacy, and so on. And we'll have to, to respect local cultures as well. I mean, there's no way around that. And, you know, everyone can have an opinion on that. But let's go to the economic dimension, because this is, I think, um, you know, one of the issues which was discussed even more here. Um, again, simplifying. The problem is that we have different business models. That's all. You know, we have a business model, you know, done by the operators and the internet service providers, which means that, you know, you get a, a, a subscription on a monthly basis, usually, and you get connected to the internet. Then you have a business model, you know, which focuses on users, which is kind of, which is trying to, to getting as many users and then sell some form of advertisement or anything to these users. And then you have something in the middle, which is around operating systems, app stores. Mm, this is something evolving around licenses, licenses and, and, um, and intellectual property. So these are, to put it very easily, the three business models we see currently around these, this ecosystem. And there are clashes, yes, and it's natural that there are clashes because these models are very different. And the catalysator of these clashes, I think, is the traffic growth we've seen around video services on the internet. Because, you know, this is for one business model very good because it, in, it increases your audience. For another business model, the subscription based, it's not so good because you have to invest in the network, you have to upgrade, and you don't really get any benefit uh, from that. So I think that it will be crucial to link you know, these, these developments, to link these different business models in a sustainable way going forward. But there's an interesting issue. When we ask our customers what they think the issues are around the internet, they don't come up with these issues. They come up with something else. They come up with restrictions. And we speak a lot about the openness of the internet and so on, but I mean, actually, this is a very restricted environment. I will give you an example. If you, want to, if you want to move on from your smartphone an application you downloaded to another smartphone you might buy because you like it, you cannot do that. You cannot move an application from one to the other. This is very different from the, let's say, more telco world we are in, where you can move, for example, a mobile number from one customer to another. There's no portability, if you want to say, no interconnectivity between these systems. And what's the reason? The reason is that we have seen a big um, success of proprietary systems in the last years. This is also very different to the world, you know, my company usually comes from, which is the telecommunication world. This is usually based on open standards, on interoperability, on a form of agreement that things can speak to each other and work together. This is not happening in the internet world, in the internet service world. We have proprietary systems and standards coming up, which means that someone is owning that. And that's the reason why you cannot, you know, both, for example, call from one voice uh, over IP service to another, or why you cannot use, you know, one app which you have bought maybe even on a different mobile phone. This is not working. So when we speak to our customers, you know, they feel a lot of restrictions, and a lot of them is related to intellectual property when you go to the content and so on. And I mean, to be very honest, and with all respect, when you have an environment where currently in the smartphone world 90% is, uh, is, is, let's say, owned by two um, private companies, I think um, going forward that might be a challenge. So I will I ask you, I said to you in the beginning, and I will finish now, that we have the, um, that, that we see that challenge to connecting everyone to the <coughs> internet. And when you, when you think about the networks and you think about the handsets you need for that, one of the restricting factors is that smartphones are too expensive. Smartphones we see today is too expensive. Hamadun, if you want to connect these people, you need cheap smartphones and you need the networks to, to be able to connect these devices, okay? And the reason a big bunch of the cost of a smartphone today are license fees which need to be paid to the, to the uh, operating system owner. 
So what Telefonica did, my company did, is we started an initiative together with Mozilla Foundation. These are the guys who brought you the Firefox browser. And to develop an, an open standard, a free standard for a mobile operating system. And we hope with that, to be very honest, that we can offer to our customers, for example, in Latin America, where we have the majority of our customers, a cheap smartphone which might be able to cost around 80 euros and not 200 euros. So, you know, this will open up this world and this will get everyone connected, you know, getting the connectivity, getting the smartphone to that market. And I'm happy to see that a lot of other operators joined that, a lot of manufacturers and so on. So I think this will be a decisive factor. So I would end with saying that I think the rules for this ecosystem are really not written yet. We've just seen the start of a huge development, a development which will leave us, you know, all in a, in a different world in the future. I think that all stakeholders need to be working collaborative on that. I'm not sure what's the right system. I'm not sure, you know, if, if, we, if we have to go more down one route or the other. But I'm sure that you need to get these people around the table like we're sitting here. We have today a multi-stakeholder dialogue here. Yeah? We have people from the industry, of people from governments. This is what we need. We need to speak about that. There needs to be respect for fundamental rights. That's for my personal opinion. I think we need to get a, a secure and, and uh, um, and an and open environment for all users and companies. So the challenge, the global agenda, get everyone connected. And because this will give us the benefits of the internet.